me and Logat last can call a Wallam Wakas a Gawal a Bal Dolaren done on our war a Hugshiv Domin you. Disagum Gwillam Igdain of Marina, Nadini er Iriglo on Adam Nu Marhishuk Dundarahor. Glockam Gahul, Leshan Amnakon Shah. The war on Onor Dom Avet Marhishuk, August Cadley and Marstaw to Gamora Gwing. Cadley no hin, Honig Ashling Nasirsha, Igriach Dorer, Marbwinimer Stotokamach. Dahan on down or Navsplokus. The character may have shay, Marmishan, a going in ish. Irak the yen of Kaurul and our dear, the Kyan Kade Blian. Con the Fibana tall river winch and a hair and a ratig. Con docus a holo her, och a will egentacht, agus a docus. Alas Concorla, I'm very proud of the state that was created a hundred years ago under most extreme pressure. Throughout difficult crises and challenges, our democracy endured and survived and prospered. We won the ultimate freedom that all nations desire and develop to, as Michael Collins predicted, and we owe a debt to men and women of all political parties and all traditions. A crucial year in the history of our state was 1932, because that's when the wishes of the people were respected, the democratic principle was put ahead of all others, and there was a peaceful transfer of power. The coming together of Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil in a shared government of the Green Party in 2020 was less significant, but was nonetheless another important moment in our history. Last Concorla, I want to take this opportunity to commend Michal Martin on the leadership that he showed as Taoiseach for putting the country before politics and for providing reassurance and hope during difficult times. In 2020, the incoming Taoiseach was unable to have his wife and family with them at the convention centre as he received the greatest honour of his life. That too was leadership, and I'm really glad that they're with us today. During the pandemic, we all saw the best of each other, and it meant that the new coalition was born in a spirit of togetherness and hope. And I intend that spirit to continue as we implement with our partners in the Green Party the agreed programme for government. I'd also like to thank my family, friends and staff. Thank you for your work, your love and your support. When we enter public life, we choose that path. Our loved ones do not. And I want you to know that my work as Taoiseach is driven by your example, and I intend to honour your confidence in me. I also want to thank in particular my constituents in Dublin West for giving me the opportunity to serve as a TD and for electing me on four occasions. All of us, whether we're ministers or leaders or opposition spokespeople, know that our mandate ultimately derives from the people who vote for us on election day. And for that, I remain eternally grateful. I also want to thank all of the deputies who supported my nomination from Fine Gael, from Fianna Fáil, the Green Party and Independence. Bless Cancorla, when I became Taoiseach in June 2017, so much of the focus was on my election and what it represented and symbolised. That was understandable at the time. But I think we should focus on where our country is now and what needs to be done as we prepare for our next century of statehood. Our history of the last 100 years has been about winning the additional freedoms that were denied to us or which we were unable to imagine at the time. Becoming a republic, becoming a place where you're not limited by your gender, religion, race, background or sexual orientation, becoming a country where you're free to be yourself. So what are the challenges for the next 100 years? We have many and some of them we need to fix now, otherwise we will be betraying the current generation and the generations who come after us. I'm thinking particularly of housing and how we have to go all out to turn the corner on rising homelessness and falling home ownership. We need to accelerate our plan housing for all, making home ownership a reality for the many again. I'm thinking of how we need to tame inflation and bring the cost of living under control, especially when it comes to the cost of energy, childcare, education, rent and healthcare. I'm thinking about climate and biodiversity, the challenges facing our planet, and the need to set ourselves the ambition of becoming energy independent and develop the ideas and systems and mechanisms to make sure that happens. I believe we can harness our massive untapped renewable natural resources, providing greater energy security, stable prices, more jobs, and regional development. I'm also thinking, as we all are, about the unprovoked war that has brought death and devastation to Ukraine. 
and today I reaffirm our commitment to stand with our fellow Europeans in this harsh winter and to help them in every way we possibly can. I'm thinking of the Defence Forces, the men and women who put the safety of others above their own, and in particular, Private Sean Rooney. We offer our condolences to his fiancée, his family and his friends, and our thoughts and prayers are also with Trooper Shane Carney. We wish him a speedy recovery. I'm thinking of the Good Friday Agreement of nearly 25 years ago. Fundamental elements of that agreement, the Assembly and the Executive, are still suspended. Cancorla, or rather Las Cancorla, dreams of a better future are not built on stalemate and status quo. And I want to work with all parties in this House and in Northern Ireland, as well as the British Government and our partners in the European Union, to make progress on the protocol and to restore the institutions of the agreement. I'm also thinking of the most vulnerable in our society, and especially children. We need to improve access to therapies, provide better special needs education, and do more for those who need it the most. We also need to do more about child poverty and disadvantage. We know that poverty restricts a child's opportunity and casts a long shadow over their lives. The number of children experiencing consistent poverty has fallen by 45,000. We are making progress, but it still means that too many children are missing out on the everyday opportunities they deserve. I'll speak more about these matters later on. Alas, Cancorla, Ireland has never been a failed state, and it is, it is grotesque and dishonest to claim that we are or ever were. But we are failing some of our citizens, and it's essential to our success as a country that we spend the next two years doing all we can to put this right. In eight days' time, most homes around the country will celebrate Christmas with presents and good cheer. Most, but not all. For some families, for some children, Christmas is a time of fear and uncertainty and a time of great unhappiness. The greatest resource of any country is its people. So let's try to make sure that all our people have a fair chance, starting with our youngest, their health, continuing with their education, staying with our young people until they're able to create the future they want, providing them with the stepping stones to their ultimate freedom. Our ambition is to make Ireland the best country in Europe in which to be a child. As Taoiseach, my mission will be to build on the achievement of 100 years ago and to work on what needs to be done for this generation and the next, providing hope and housing, economic opportunities and a fair start for all. And so I accept this nomination by the Dáil with humility and resolve, with a burning desire to make good the promise of 100 years ago and provide new hope and new opportunities for all of our citizens. Gurmil Lagav.